Hi. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's session. Um, usually, you're always interested in understanding SEO. What is SEO? What is SEM? And we are usually, as marketers, focused on developing better SEO strategies. But today, I have a special guest who's going to up your ante about understanding really how to analyze and optimize your keywords, not just for organic search, which is what SEO does, but also for paid marketing as well, which is really what SEM is. So today, I'm really proud to introduce to you Christophe. He is going to show us a lot of examples of how you can start really using keywords to better analyze them in order to have successful SEM campaigns. And if you want more after this session, Christoph is having a conference, which he will tell you a bit about at the end of his presentation, that will be focused all on SEM in Poland. So be there and listen to what Christoph has to say to us today. Thank you, Christoph, and welcome. Hi, hi, welcome, and thank you for a kind introduction. Yeah, I will focus about how you can manage to do some stuff that influences both SEO and SEM strategies less in paid media. And this is very important because uh, no matter what you do, you're working with your website or business, like just optimizing content, or you are um, developing new link strategy, or you are doing strict technical SEO, or you're doing the campaigns in Google Ads, you will benefit from this knowledge because <clears throat> I found out that those two systems, they uh, interact with each other. And I will sell you a strategy to improve everything on a little basic level, but then you'll find that this is some kind of work that we underestimate or we don't have time for, and it will give you a great results. So to be honest, um, it's always important to like, so why should you listen to me? And I started my career in SEO and both Google Ads, back then it was called uh, AdWords, in 2005. So in 2005, we had a much, much, uh, different market and the SEO was done in a different way. We know about these black hat techniques that were very popular back then for clients. Now for clients is more like white hat SEO. Affiliates still do nice tricks, but it was a different times, right? So when I started this and I was starting my own company, my agency, Deva Group, uh, I got this idea about getting some nice results for my affiliate site, which is earning money in AdSense. And I want to tell you a story about how I'm the hero of this story and how I achieved something. But no, it's like always with me, I am the villain in this story. So we got these results of election incoming, election whole countries watching the results in the internet. And I set up a very small page with great answers for every people question who won the election. So I put this page and I put it on some server and some old domain, okay? And then I want to mix my ideas, technologies. So I made this small program that added a lot of links to different sites like, sites like, I don't know, uh, guest books, forums. It was a spammy technique back then. I didn't even know it's like Black Hat and Google can punish me for this. But back then, my site only got new links in that number. Because when I started my machine, I was like this, like I made hundreds of new links and I leave it overnight to make a lot of links and see the results next day, right? So no, I made thousands of links during the night and I was only one site with lot of links. Everyone has results, of course, big portals, big sites, media outlets, you know, but I want this. And I broke the server. The server was hosting one of the top um, sites in, Pol in Poland. It was a top portal with offers like travel uh, and stuff and flights. And they called me like, what have you done? Because our server is down. And I said, I'm top one at the results of election in Poland. And they said, okay, you should come to us because we want to hire you as our SEO guy. And that was the start of the history. But now 
let's do it differently. Let's don't break any servers. Let's don't spam any guest books. Just focus on what we can do for a user. Because what I found during the years that understanding the intent of a keyword is super important because all we want to do at the end of the day is to win um, conversion, right? So how can we win conversion? We have to be useful for a user. So user entering our site cannot be like baited to it. We know these bait techniques in Google Discover, right? The sites are saying some like title is cool, we enter and then we are disappointed. It's not a way to get a conversion. It's a way to annoy user. We don't want to do that. And we are doing this all the time. We are annoying user with wrong keywords, wrong ads, wrong landing pages all the time. How can I say this? Yeah, because I read the reports. And I will show you what kind of reports you can read and check it. And first of all, why is it important? Because of the quality score. So it doesn't matter if you're doing SEO or just Google Ads. The quality score should tell you how Google perceives you as a being in a search engine results page. So first of all, they look at the click-through rate. It's not like they count the click-through rate from the first position and they give you bonus because you are first. No, they exactly know how to count it. They don't mind the position of your ad. So if your ad is on the top, they expect you to have a higher CTRs. And if you are in the SERP results on the bottom, they expect you to have CTRs like the bottom of the page, right? So we know we can check this. In Google Ads, we have reports for this. And of course, in uh, SEO, we can check it in search and um, Google uh, Webmaster Central before, now Google Search Console, right? The names are changing, but we know the same tool. But what is important? We cannot manipulate this. It's not about like sending bot traffic to clicking on our results. We know this. But if Google takes a big dose of users, real users, they can know if a user is a bot or a real person, right? They will take this under consideration. And of course, you will read reports that CDR is not important. The click-through rate is not important for SEO. That's not entirely true. And I made a lot of tests that shows that improving your statement in a title and description can lead to higher CTRs. And only if you follow with good non-baiting landing page, you can get greater results. We call it like user um, aspect. Like the user is deciding what is higher and lower in Google, also in SEO. It's not the same algorithm, like it's not one and one the same as in Google Ads, but we can learn from Google Ads and take inspiration. And the second part of quality score is ad relevance. And you will say, okay, so ad is relevant if the CDR is good. It's not exactly this. Google can check if the keyword is relevant with the text of an ad. So again, we know that we will be checked against the relevance with the title, description, and of course, the landing page. So you see there are three elements, three main elements of quality score, and they interact with each other because you cannot do a great ad without a great landing page. You cannot do a great ad with mixing bad keywords. It all works together. So if you check this and add very important stuff, which is intent, the keyword intent, you will find the solution for your troubles with keywords that don't make your site convert and how to look for them. <clears throat> First of all, we can translate this quality score into exact stuff we have to do on our website on in our campaigns. First of all, we have to know that we cannot take all the keywords for a campaign or for our SEO project. The keyword has an intent and they will lead to conversion or not depending if we answer that intent. So for example, if you are looking for jewelry and you put a keyword like jewelry, we don't know if you want to buy a ring or earrings. We have to answer this intent with a lot of different products, right? But if you are looking for gold ring with diamond, you have to see on the landing page the very gold ring with diamond, right? So it should be easy, but it's not. The, Intent is very complicated with a lot of phrases. They can have a lot of intent in it. And the percentage of the population, which is looking for uh, earrings, for example, 
type in jewelry in Google and rings, all like uh, other types of jewelry, they are different. So you have to learn what we should give this user in an ad on our, our title and description when we're talking about SEO and in the landing page. And we have to learn this sometimes by heart, by analyzing data, wasting some money on like not working campaign, and then we can refine the data and find, okay, I have to change my landing page. Then we have to match this intent with our message. So in SEO, I told title and description mostly, and of course, landing page. Landing page should give this promise, keep this promise we told in the keyword, the intent, and in the ad or title description. It's basic should be easy, but it's not that easy. So when I started analyzing this for my clients and for sites I audit, we could easily drop more than 20, sometimes like half of the campaign, like just pause it because we knew that it won't give the results. Why? Because client wanted to do easy wins. For example, it's super easy to put new keywords in your campaign uh, in Google Ads, but it's hard for them to deliver because client was not ready, not ready with the content, not ready with the landing page. And we could see it in Google Analytics reports. I will show you some. Then we can drop a lot of SEO works because SEO company, which worked with this client in past, they just do landing page and the landing pages were optimized for bots, for algorithm. They were not optimized for person. So for example, you go to this page, you go to the main page and see their offers, their B2B offer. It's great. It has video, it has content. They focus on USP, they focus on call to action and stuff. But the landing page made for SEO were very, very bad. Content were, it was made only to cover keywords, right? This is bad decision. And we could easily drop at a, a lot of landing pages, a lot of uh, link building and stuff, just making sure that we focus on the user at the end. And of course, a lot of keywords taken into the consideration for SEO campaign were trash. They didn't, um, like they gathered some traffic, of course, but they didn't convert. Why? Because the intent was not there in the beginning. Those keywords from the start will not sell products of this client. So I can give you numbers, the percentage, but it always depends on your site. And if you do the audit inspired by my presentation, you will find that you have like five, 10, or even 20% or more of traffic you're generating to improve. And then not encouraging you to stop uh, advertising for some keywords. A lot of times you will find that improving the message and improving the landing page can give you boost and can give you conversions from those keywords. But sometimes we have to say stop and just drop the keywords. Okay, so first of all, how to get those new keywords? And we have so much tools that I can do a whole presentation just about those tools. So I will tell you how to work with them rapidly. So the first of all, the best tool, even for SEOs, is Google Ads Keyword Planner. There is no better tool. And we are talking about the intent, right? This tool will give you the most important data. So you have the relevance of a keyword, how many search queries there are in, during the month, but you will see the context. So if I'm searching mostly on mobile or I'm searching mostly on desktop, laptop, right? But there is also something more. Google hid the intent in this tool. When you're typing a keyword, and Google says, oh, there are, those are similar keywords. You have to learn that they can be put by the user next to the keyword, like after searching for the first one, and maybe later uh, they will refine their search. So now they search for jewelry. So if we ask Google, Google, tell me some related keywords for jewelry, we will know the intent of the keywords jewelry a little, and we'll know the negative keywords, of course, but we'll learn how we should answer this intent, how we, what we should present to our user. So it's not only about building the list of keywords or even clusters. No, it's about learning how they are re related to each other and learning that if a user is searching for this keyword, we have to have answer for a much more 
keywords and much more topics on our site. And we can not make like clusters. So this page and this landing page, and that's all. We can make the relation in those clusters based on these two. It's very complicated work. You have to manually spend a lot of time because there is no tool that will give you uh, the more insight than just, okay, those, uh, those keywords are related. You have to deep dive on this and during working with the content, for example, copywriter can in, like not only make an article about the cluster, but can make relation links, interlinking, some like work around this topic, small one in a big one, or big article, just to make uh, this chain of events for a user. It's super important. Then you can go, of course, for Google Search Console, and it's great for feedback because you already have the data you are ranking in Google, so you can check the CTRs. And if you uh, do a lot of data analyze, you can check if there is a good CTR for this position or it's not. And I do a lot of tests in Google Search Console. I, for example, search for keywords that are uh, on 11th or 12th position uh, because they are low-hanging fruits, so I can like easily up the rank uh, with some link building or optimization. And this is the great place to search for inspirations. And sometimes you're working towards the SEO goal of a keyword and there is no results in Google Search Console. So put this keyword in Google Ads and you can check the results. And then you will know if the keywords will convert with your landing page. So you will learn on the different campaign, right? And go back to Google Search Console. Uh, second part is a big tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs. In Poland, we have SEMstorm and Senuto. Uh, they have a large databases for keywords and you search for the keywords. What they are missing for me is the relations. So you can, of course, explore the clusters, but you will have to spend time and manual labor to get those relations and learn how the keywords are related. But of course, you can go one step back and go back to Keyword Planner and search it there. Then you can extract, for example, something from your competition. So anchor text from Majestic or Ahrefs, and you can see other mm, websites, domains, how they are trying to get links what keywords are important. You should check the internal search engine. If you have one, if you are e-commerce, for example, this is a great place to uh, find new ideas. And you should check uh, something called Lupa Search. It's an AI-powered search engine for e-commerce. And even if you don't use it, you can get a lot of ideas from how this tool works. So internal search is very important. I'm just saying that in Google Analytics 4, you can measure internal search also like in universal analytics and we learn a lot of how the user interact with our website from this of course you can use bing keyword planner remember that in some countries bing has a lot of traffic i mean it's not a lot it's few percent but we found out that in a lot of european countries when we copy google ad campaigns to a bing straight right when one to one copy we get a lot of conversions and they are very very cheap uh, Again, a lot is extra 5% or extra 10% conversions, but they can be much cheaper than in Google Ads. It depends what country you're targeting, uh, but mind that they have also a keyword planner. And of course, you can go to a lower level of tools, answer the public keyword tool, Ubersuggest. They will extract data from Google Autocomplete, and they will show you more relation with the keywords, how they are related, how you can search for something important, I will tell you in the next slides. And of course, you can go to chat GTP and other AI tools. If you put some questions like what are related keywords, what are related topics, it will help you. So AI powered content is a future, of course. Be sure not to make all content AI. Uh, we have some results from trying to mess with Google, like with all, all AI generated content all over the world. And Google can find this uh, content. And if it's not helpful, you know, the helpful content update, eat principle, and stuff like this, it, Google can manually ban you or like drop you from, uh, from index. We saw this happening a lot. So we are very, very strict. Like you're still using uh, human copywriters for most important uh, pieces. But 
remember that chat gtp can influence you like show you in the right di direction and it's super simple you can just ask like show me related keywords to my keyword and you will understand something that is very very similar to what you will get from keyword planner it's different because it's not live world data but it's uh, for evergreen content or for content that is not changing much in last year it could be very very helpful but there are some quick wins I can show you in this keyword analysis. First, you can export trends from and trends data from the planner. I will show you this live. For example, if I put in a Google planner uh, these keywords and I use the um, search for, I will copy this, show you. I use the search for volume and forecast. So I have these keywords. I can go deeper and not just see the trends here and you know you can go far four years back in the trends and it's much better than google trends because google trends does, doesn't have this exact data but if you go here and you want to download this plan don't choose forecast just choose historical metrics go for google sheets and you can download this and we'll see that google will show me exact data so we'll see the data like this, and you can compare all these months. So for example, if I want to see if I will have some changes in traffic in April or May, I will choose and um, check the April and May year ago, right? So I have all the data and partially data here extracted, and I can work with this uh, very, very easily. Another quick win is you can uh, get video snippets from SEMrush or Ahrefs. Uh, if you check if there are SERP features on SERP and you see feature video, you can go and go for a quick win with video uh, put on YouTube. And you can see that there are a lot of uh, like uh, videos coming up just in SERPs. Uh, it's super easy way to analyze your competitors or your domain to search for those topics. And then you can use some plugins like VidIQ to see if you are have good video tags. You can extract tags from your competition and check, for example, this checklist. If you're okay with your description, title and stuff, you should put on YouTube for organic results. And last quick win, you can get competitors keyword and keyword gaps from SEMrush and looking for this uh, in SEMrush, you will see your real competitors. The sites you are fighting with both in Google Ads or in organic that are your real competitor. So if you put the site here, you can search for their keywords and learn, okay, I'm missing those keywords or these keywords doesn't concern me. So it's super important to learn based on this. Okay, you can also go to auction insights. If you're doing SEO, you're missing a huge piece on who are your real competitors because even if you are doing seo you have to compete with your title and description with the ads that are above you right so how you get competitors you start your campaign and then you can see this overlap rate impression share uh, all the stuff about your competitors in very very segmented data like for ad group or for a whole campaign in google ads totally for free. And then you put those domains in those tools I showed you before, and you can analyze them. Very important for intent and answering the intent are keywords that are questions. So you can get those questions from Google suggestions, for example, keyword tool, I will show you in a second. You can scan and filter all the big databases. So for example, you extract a database of the keywords for your competitor blog, and then search for questions like how, or when and stuff like this, and you should answer this question and you can go data-driven with, for example, Contado or Surfer SEO. So how it looks, if you go to Contado, you can put a topic and then scan top 10 or more even, as you see here, and then we can work with this. So it's driven, I will show in a second here, okay. So I scanned, for um, my topic is marketing conference, and I can see the keywords already there. So the keywords are answering the intent, and I can go uh, here for ideas, and can check questions to answer, and I can, of course, get more questions and analyze them further, because there are questions found on the pages and results in Google. So Contado is scanning how Google thinks about this uh, 
keyword, marketing conference as a whole topic, and you can import them here and write the content. Of course, this is great, AI writing. I can open this and I can, for example, go with the outline. From the conference, generate this. And it will take just a second to get whole idea for my blog post. And I can read it here. Yeah. And get copy to editor. And I can work further with this. And of course, it works real time. So I can see what keywords I'm missing and stuff I want to put also. This is a great tool for copywriters, but it's like it's doomed to succeed. Why? Because it's based on the not just keyword thinking, but keyword relations data driven from SERPs. And we know that the search engine results page are based on the user intent because Google works on the user intent. So it's all here uh, for you. Okay, so let's get back to next ideas because we have to also deliver uh, the intent, how to get the intent and how to think about it, like what's behind the keyword. So first of all, you have to think about Google Ads as a great tool for testing. And we know that we don't read ads, we only scan them. And if you focus on your uh, SEO campaign, you will never have an opportunity to test some ideas like titles, description. We do it in Google Ads. We do an uh, ad, we test it with some ideas, and then we extract the data and we have a perfect title for SEO campaign. That's the, the, the simple recipe. So for example, what do, what do we test? Just to give you some examples and inspiration. We test USP, and of course we can like highlight the unique, change the cons to pros, because if I'm putting something like, I'm searching for this vacuum cleaner, I have in my mind with the intent, I wanna buy the good one, which is powerful, because I know that there are some, they are not powerful and they are very, very loud. And I don't want a loud vacuum cleaner. I have, for example, small kids or pet in the house, which will be scared by it, okay? So we put those ideas straight into search results and we can solve the problems. For example, some people are looking for a certain tool, but they have something in their mind price, of course, but the solution some, to some problems. And if you analyze this for your ads campaign and you put and tested it in Google Ads, you see you can choose this to answer in uh, the results in title and description. Second great idea is numbers. The numbers you can use in a lot of, lot of um, different ideas, but the numbers will change the focus of the uh, your clients in the search engine uh, and they will look at your results differently. And the last one, call to action. We can use call to action very simple like this, but it won't give you results. It's, it's, it's bad. It's very simple and plain. You can upgrade them. For example, to show the limited uh, availability and for example, future benefits and other stuff. And of course you can target the simple ideas, but you if you connect the emotions and CTR, USP and CTR, numbers in CTR, it's the best because we know we have uh, not much characters to use in uh, results, right? Okay, so first of all, if you analyze this, we go to Google Ads and we check the CTRs. It can be a good lead or a trap. For example, for me, the Google Ads keyword is very, very bad. People are not looking for service. They're looking for a tool. They wanted to enter interface, right? So I'm probably wasting money on those clicks. But here I can see that a lot of people are searching for a contact with the ads. It's also a trap because I don't want to be a contact for, for ads. They will ask for a Google representative. This is bad for me. And of course, on this slide, we don't have enough data. We need like few times more than this to analyze the CTRs. So this report can give you some hints, but it's not very, very good. The better report is to analyze quality score. You can segment it for the three types of like, elements of quality score I showed you, and you can go further and go for a deep dive and check it. But the important stuff is to check for changes in quality score. Not a lot of experts are doing this. You have to see if the quality score is changing for good or bad. Uh, it's quite more important than the, mm, like, uh, account score, which Google is giving you, like the optimization score, I mean, no, it's not so important. 
The changes in quality score are essential to understanding if you are going in the right direction or bad direction. You have to upgrade your landing page or your keywords or your ads. Okay, so you can do it manually or extra scripts or some tools. And of course, you can change in Google Ads only, not in SEO, the idea of the intent. So the segments, look at this. It's a report for click to rate, uh, depending on age here. And if we check this like this, people age 18, 24, they are not clicking my ad. So they are dropping my CTRs, it's bad. I have to change ad to address them, or I have to skip this segment. And of course, I can skip a lot of segments. I can set, uh, first of all, observation like here for a lot of segments that are in Google Ads. So I, for example, I'm doing the uh, ads for laptop keyword, and I want to sell gaming laptops. I'm not marketing to every Google user. I will find the segment for uh, gamers and the conversion rates are up. It's super simple. You don't have to always go by the keyword. In Google Ads, we have a lot of ideas. And if those ideas work, you can optimize the landing page for the gamers. And for example, the big segments are parents of gamers, right? So you optimize, are you a parent? You need the help, call us and we'll help you choose the perfect gaming laptop for your kid, right? This is all knowledge for content coming from optimizing Google Ads, right? So it's all connected. So you can test all of these ideas in Google Ads and then you can deploy them in title and description in SEO. And it's not only about title and description, but it's also about the content on the landing page. So if you learn that the, there is something that people are asking for, related keywords, uh, something that they click in ad more often like uh, extensions, yeah, you can use it on the landing page also. So the technical check is for you. You can search for missing title and description in SEO by a simple crawler like Sidebulb, it will give you a lot of hints. And the title is still very, very important. You probably heard that Google is overwriting your titles, but they are taken into consideration as an algorithm uh, issue. And then you can check the length and word order, right? And you can analyze where to put your brand. It should be at the end of a title if you want get some important keywords at the beginning, right? Then you can check the pixel count because it's not about how many characters you can put, it's about how many pixels you can put in search engine results page. This is ScreenForm, Screaming Frog, it's a very useful tool. Sidebulb and Screaming Frog you can check for free and after the trial you can pay, but they are big, powerful crawlers. They don't look like this, but the expert use them. They are very, very powerful tools if you know how to use them. And you can improve the title over H1, uh, for example. So you put something in H1, but you can put more in title because title is more important. Uh, if you look at the search engine results page, right? The H1 is not appearing there, title is. So a lot of opportunities for you and the at the end, standing out symbols and dates, you can uh, work towards it and remember to change the dates and recycle your content. I will show you an example. This is crazy example. It's for SEO in Warsaw, the Polish capital. Look how many uh, results I found with the strange symbols and stuff. They're fighting for attention, right? You can learn on this uh, because you, you don't need to put hearts in, in your results, but the telephone icon or putting the telephone or showing your uh, the numbers can attract more users. You have to test it, of course, and check the results in Google Search Console or test it in ads, but there are a lot of ideas out there. And see, I put keyword best CRM in Google and I didn't add the date. There are top results. Four top results got the date in it. So now you can see your blog. You paid a lot of time or cash to, to, to get the content and you go and check all the dates and change the dates and recycle your content. We decided that we don't put dates in older posts. It's against what Google says that you, put, you should put the date. No, if you have evergreen content, putting date that is from 2019, will drive the user to skip it. Like, oh, I don't, it's old, I don't wanna click. But if you put a new date, I, we updated this recently as the best blogs in SEO do, yeah, you will get more traffic. That's so simple, but it takes time to check your content if it's still valid and still operational. Okay, so at last, how to deliver that landing page. So if you have data-driven content, we are like 
doomed to win, right? But we have to use analytics. For first of all, you have to anticipate incoming questions. So when you're scanning for questions, for example, in this tool, you can here go to questions. This is a simple keyword tool. We have suggestions and we have questions, and I can extract all these questions very simply with a free edition. I can copy them and I can go here to my planner and put it all and check if they are relevant. This is very important because a lot of those questions are garbage. Like they're, they're not important. They're just generated by Google automatically. So you can go here and search for the questions and you have to answer them on your landing page. And then uh, you can learn about the context and similar searches. So again, we learn what we should put on the landing page and then you have to measure for success. This is simple. Universal Analytics report, you can do it easily in uh, Google Analytics 4. It's about bounce rate. We have bounce rate also and sessions now with interactions in Google Analytics 4. So if I check the bounce rate, it's my first, it's not super important, but it's only a marker for me. Okay, I have to check this because this blog post is getting a lot less traction on the for the website than, for example, this one for some tools, right? So I can learn about this. I can give feedback to my copywriters. I said, don't write this because people are not going to check our page and our offers, okay? But what's more important, the time and of course conversions. You can measure all the important conversions and probably you are measuring contact and transaction, but there are a lot more. Mm, you can like see the main conversions here, but you can go deeper and check another level like micro conversion site activity copying of address uh, adding to cart it's not so important as transaction but if we put a lot of blog posts and people are using them and not interacting with our shopping cart at all it it says that our content is bad because we didn't driven um, results that are trying to sell even so for a Lack of, in the lack of data, the micro conversion can help you analyze your traffic, right? Then you can go deeper and do something which is more important than finding uh, issues, preventing the issues, okay? Preventing the issues because you anticipate what will happen on your page. For example, in Google Analytics 4, you can find an easy tutorials how to automate uh, 404 errors. So you are putting your link building techniques stuff and someone deletes your content and your ads are sending traffic to a 404. You can check the trends in bounce rate and they are very important. I told you check the trends and changes in quality score. But if you check the trends in bounce rate and you see, wow, why my blog is bounce rating more? What happened? And for example, the year changes. We saw it in data. I cannot show you exact uh, client's data, but we saw it like it was magical. Uh, during the beginning of the year, our blog got more bounce rates and we didn't understand why. We go for client analysis and uh, the main connection was the date in the title. The date was for last year. So we updated dates, we checked the content and it's back to normal. The bounce rate dropped again. And be ready for traffic spikes. If you automated alerts for traffic spikes, you can see, oh, we have this season, the trends are up for these keywords. You can put promotions, you can address the sales and there you can easily win this. So automate your Google Analytics 4 and check out for these trends to prevent. And of course you can go beyond Google Analytics 4. Hotjar will tell you how uh, user interact with your content and how it works. And of course you can see the recordings. So I'm using Hotjar to analyze blog posts for scroll depth because scroll depth in Google Analytics 4 is very, very uh, like simple, you scroll to the 90% and okay, it's the event. And here you can see the map and it's very, very cool. Uh, you can go and try Hotjar for free for quite amount of data. And then if you like it, you can go for paid version, but it's like eye opener for a lot of people that didn't work with UX on their uh, pages. And in data-driven SEO, I'm reminding you, Surfer SEO, great tool to analyze. You can check the technicalities and how much keywords you should put or how much words you should put on your website. It analyzes top 10. And of course, I showed you Contado and the, with the question, with the AI writer, they are very, very powerful tools to help you uh, for this question to find the relation between the keywords and the intent. Of course, you can do also keyword matrices. For example, here, 
uh, here I put heels with a different colors. And when I put all colors from Wikipedia, Wikipedia and heels, I will find which perfect landing page I should choose, like which colors for a landing page I should choose. And of course, uh, blue, black, and red are top colors. I should have them on my landing page because I want to answer the intent. User will put only keyword heels and she probably will expect that there are black or red, right? The price range that will be also expected, or a lot of stuff. And of course, we have like AI-based or machine learning-based uh, search engines for big e-commerce. But for B2B and for another small niches, you should just do a matrix and just do the relation and say, OK, they're looking for this. We will get this answer. We'll put this product on the landing page because it's most searched for, right? And you can also use dynamic search ads for your landing page optimization because the dynamic search ads, they are using a Google algorithm to match keyword and landing page. For example, you can put a lot of landing page here for your blog or stuff, and Google will find keywords for you. Great opportunity for doing another SEO rounds for, for your blog posts. And then the matching will tell you what kind of keywords you should match with what kind of uh, content in other campaigns or in SEO campaign. And the optimization here for SEO will give you more cheap traffic in Google Ads. It's great campaign. Dynamic search ads and shopping ads work like this. They will benefit from the optimization, like Core Web Vitals optimization also will benefit in those campaigns. And that's all for you. I hope some inspiration were um, cool for you and will stay with you and will benefit in your campaigns. And if there are a lot, I hope you can go back and check the tools. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of ideas how to improve your traffic. I know that we need time for this, but I hope now after this presentation, you will look at uh, your campaign with this another stuff behind every keyword, the intent, which is there, and you can measure them in Google Analytics or in different tools, and you can build four campaigns based on the intent to win more conversion. Thank you. OK, I'm looking at the comments and chat, but I'm waiting for the host to join us for the questions. Because I'm not seeing your questions right away. They are uh, just right here on private chat. Um, I will check if I can go to Pine. Maybe there is some kind of way. Yeah, I can see it now. OK, we'll try to manage without the host. She'll be shortly here. OK, and the question start. Yeah, I think the slides and recordings will be available for you. So you're sorry for the speed and stuff. And yeah, I wanted to share a lot of ideas with you today. And uh, there is another question. OK, I see something here. Is there a correlation between the ads budget spent on Google Ads and the organic position on SERP? I mean, if you spend more on advertising with Google premise, the organic search, and the contrary. No, there is no. Uh, not. Uh, we want to see this one day because it will like be a big lawsuit for Google. No, it's not, it's not working like this. I was a consultant for uh, Interior Panel. It's like second or third largest site in Poland. And I was there uh, implementing Google Analytics for this site. I was there starting campaign. We spent a lot of money. Like it's a huge amounts of money for Google Ads. And there was no change in results whatsoever. So uh, there is no way like to influence your organic search with Google Ads. But it works on the different level, like the optimization level. If you put some, uh, for example, uh, you know, Core Web Vitals, right? If you optimize for Core Web Vitals, 
your campaign, Google Ads campaign, and SEO both will benefit for this. So those are examples to work, but no, the budget budget game is is not working. Hey, sorry about that. I was just stuck in you in the back room. No problem. But thank you so much, Christoph, <laughs> for this amazing presentation. And yes, you will get these slides later on, okay? So thank you again and have a great evening. Thank you. If you have any more questions, I'm available on my LinkedIn for you. So thank you. Have a great day and nice conference. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This is all we got. Remember the revolution in our minds. This is all we got. Lock me out of this life institution I am angry and I am illusions Yes, I hate but it's not a solution Try my best, buddy, I'm just a you